Hi guys, today we are going to be looking at the Dunlun faction and their legendary legion. Hey guys, how are you doing? I'm Top Table Steve. And I'm Top Table Ben. And as we said previously, we're going to be looking at Dunlun today. We are indeed. So we've done a couple of faction reviews already on the new Legendary Legions from uh, War in Rohan. So mm -hmm. this is one that we were kind of looking forward to, to getting our teeth stuck to. And it's an army that I'm quite excited about as well. We're both excited. We're, we are, we're yeah. both building this army. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone's building this army. Uh, just beautiful, beautiful models. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we, we're going to just get stuck in straight away. Um, so should we, before we jump into all the new stuff, should we take a look at the older models and the older profiles from the Lord of the Rings uh, rulebook? So first up, one of the uh, the first profiles that we'll look at is one of the, well, probably the most well-known from the yep. Dunlun list, which is Thryden Wolfsbane. Yeah, so this was a Games Workshop creation. Yeah. Um, he doesn't appear, he's not sort of canon talking character as such, mm -hmm. uh, but um, he, he's a, a bit of a unique hero kind of in the uh, in, in Lord of the Rings SPG. So let's have a look at his uh, stat line. Yep, so he has a move value of six, as all men do. Uh, fight five, four plus shoot value, strength five, defense five, two attacks, Two wounds, courage four, and he is three two two. Mm -hmm. um, he's walker, he's armor sword, and two handed axe. Yeah, absolutely. Um, heroic actions. He has strike and strength. Mm -hmm. uh, that's sort of so he's showing you his characteristics. As he's a bit of a beefcake. He's there to smash things up. He is indeed. Uh, he's got access to a horse for ten points, which is um, key. Yeah, absolutely. Him. When he's only got two attacks, yeah. you kind of want that extra uh, attack, knockdown, and uh, extra attack. He has a couple of special rules. So first up, he has got Mighty Blow, which is essentially when he does one wound, he does two. two yeah. um, so basically, he's, he's doubling every wound that he does. So that can be very, very tasty. Mm. He's also got Lord of Dunland, um, which means the range of Thredon's standfast is twelve inches. So that's yeah. that's it's decent, it's de decent. You know, that's, yeah, decent. that's half a battlefield yeah. essentially. Yeah. Um, so uh, you know, especially with low courage warriors, he is quite useful to have quite sort of late into the game. Yeah. So interesting profile. Um, strength five is, is good and fight five is decent. Very good. Low defense, defense five. Yeah, but that's I think something that we will come to see um, when we look at the rest of the Dunlin profiles as well. Yeah. Um, but he's a decent hero. He is he's 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 kind of a mid mid tier hero. He's not kind yeah. of excelling, he's not kind of up there with the Aragons and the Boromirs and things, but he he is a decent mid level uh, hero. Yeah. He's one of those characters I find that wh whoever you speak to you kind of have just like a bit of a shining light for him, mm -hmm. even though he's not fantastic. He has his flaws. He's not real Tolkien. His GW made, but there's just something about him and his profile. It's yeah. really cool. The model's nice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and he can do some really cool stuff in game if you play him right. He can indeed. Let's move on to the next profile. This one's a little bit more straightforward. This is the Dunlending Chieftain um, at 55 points. He's got move value of six, fight four, strength five, defense five, two attacks, two wounds, courage four, two might, two will, and one fate. Uh, he's got armor, dagger, and a two-handed axe, and he's got access to heroic march, as all kind mm -hmm. of standard captains do. Uh, he has got the option for a bow, and he can swap two-handed axe for an axe and a shield. So take it up potentially up to defense. Um, six, but obviously losing the ability to go two-handed, which yeah. at strength five could be pretty good. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, fight four, he's not the best. No, um, no, you know, and he's not going toe to toe with um, kind of elves or anything like that. But actually, if he starts wounding, you know, strength five, going two-handed mm -hmm. can be pretty lethal. Yeah. So a couple of warriors um, that are in this um, army list as well. We've got Dunlending warriors. Yeah. Uh, their stat line is as follows: fight three, strength four, defense four, one attack, one wound, courage three. They have an armor and an axe, and they have mm -hmm. the options for banner, shield. They can swap uh, the axe for a dagger and a bow, or but yes, dagger and bow, uh, or a two-handed axe. So pretty standard profile. Yeah. I think the only thing that really stands out there is that the strength four, um, yes. which kind of makes them stand out from a lot of the average men profiles, mm. um, and you know it kind of t puts them slightly better, I would say, than men of Rohan. Yes. Yeah. Um, but other than that, they've got a very, very sort of similar stat line. And then the last profile we've got is the Wild Men of Dunland at five points. Super, super cheap. Mm. Um, they are fight value three, strength three, defense three, one attack, one wound, courage three. They've got a sword or an axe, um, and they can have a two-handed axe for an extra point. They do have the hatred for Rohan, though, so that means... It's always nice. Yes, absolutely. So they uh, have plus one to wound against Rohan. 
Mm. Not bad, not bad. Um, they're super cheap as well, really, yeah. really cheap. What you know, they're, they're almost on par with, with goblins at that sort of price. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you can tend to sort of hoard these guys out. They look amazing as well. They're cool, they're really they cool. Old, old beautiful school, models. Old school, really old school models. Um, so uh, yeah, they are they are pretty, pretty cool. Um, so those are some of the old profiles, but I think where we really want to have a look at is uh, kind of all the, the new profiles and new all the shines. new goodies mm -hmm. that have come along with um, the new Warren Rohan supplement. Before we move on to the new uh, profiles, let's have a quick look at some of the strengths and weaknesses of Dunlan. So first up, they are high strength. So we've got, as we've already dis discussed, mm. the heroes are pretty high strength. So the Chieftain is strength five, Thread is strength five, um, and the Warriors are strength four as well, which is pretty good compared to similar sort of priced um, mm. and similar profiles uh, out there. They've got very varied Warriors. So they've got various types of Warriors. Uh, they've got... Um, uh, obviously loads of different tools that they can utilize on the battlefield they've got some new cavalry some uh, new um, huskals yes and they've got the warriors and they've got the wild men mm. um, and then there is the Dunlending Warcry which we'll discuss a little in a little bit more detail mm. shortly how about the weaknesses Steve so the weaknesses are lack of a big big hero mm -hmm. uh, which we know around, know about I think there's ways around that in the list but it is it, it would be it would have been nice to have like a really big hitting hero mm -hmm. um, low courage pretty much across yes. the army even even their main heroes are not high courage striders only courage four mm -hmm. um, and then a low fight value as well um, mm -hmm. this for me is a Horde type army. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You're taking so quite a lot of makes uh, a lot of sense. And I think there are a few little buffs, you mm -hmm. know, here and there that you know some of the uh, heroes might provide. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at the new profiles um, and see if they make a difference to this army. So the first profile we're going to be looking at is Gorolf Island Skin at 70 points. Um, this is a beautiful model, isn't it? Absolutely stunning. I, well, well, Dean Broadway picked these up for us, didn't mm. he? Uh, from uh, Throne of Skulls. Made my day. Uh, yeah, he absolutely made my, <laughs> he made, made my year. Made my 2019. Um, so he is fight five, uh, strength five, defense five, three attacks, two wounds, courage four, uh, three might, one will, and one fate. He has got armor, two axes, and a dagger. Um, he has got access to three different heroic actions, which are heroic strike, strength, and defense. And he has got a special rule, which is iron skin. Um, if at the start of the fight phase, Gorf is engaged with an enemy hero model, he may declare heroic defense without spending might. That's cool. That's pretty tasty. Yeah, that's cool. So if he comes up against big heroes, they are going to be needing natural sixes yeah. to wound him. It and counts as his low defense. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so he is only defen it. defense five, um, yeah. so he's not great. And you know, there's a lot of stuff wounding him on, mm. on fives, yeah. essentially. Um, so uh, you know, having that there, especially when he's coming up against heroes or lower level heroes, that is. That is going to be very, uh, very useful uh, yeah. for him. It nullifies his Achilles heel, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It does. Obviously, you know, against shooting, he's still going to be fairly weak, and mm. you're going to be wanting to keep him in your back ranks until uh, until your lines hit. Um, but I think that's quite a useful one. It will make him a little bit more survivable, I reckon. Yeah. Um, you know, you will probably be wanting to spend. You know, he has got three attacks, so you will probably be wanting them to do heroic combats and things like that. And you know, it, it does mean that you will be able to potentially keep your might back um, you know for, for later mm. in the game when you might want to call call heroic combats or heroic moves yeah. um, so utilizing that might for other things other than calling heroic defense yeah I like that profile it's cool so do I let's move on to the next one which is Frida Tallspear so Frida Tallspear uh, her stat line is 5-5 five, five, strength 4 defense 6 2 attacks 2 wounds courage 4 and she's 3-1-1 uh, she has armor, shield, spear, and a dagger. Mm -hmm. Heroic actions that she has access to are heroic defense and heroic strength. Mm -hmm. She has a couple of special rules. Uh, readied stance. Cavalry models do not gain the extra attack or knock to the ground bonuses when involved in a fight against Frida Tallspear or one that is she is supporting. That's amazing. It's really, That's really good. really cool. So for me, first of all, I'm seeing that as like a, a hero stopper. Yeah. Um, you know, we know how valuable horses can be. Um, you know, if they're not getting that kind of, um, uh, any of the knocks to the ground bonuses, mm. they're not getting potentially the extra attack. Um, yeah. Are they not getting the extra? Yeah, they're not yeah. getting the extra attack. Yeah. Um, so actually it's, you know, a three, three attack hero mm. charging in is getting four attacks. All of a sudden they're back down to three and it, kind of weighs the mm. the battle back in your favour a little bit as well. Yeah. 
she's fight five as well, so she, yeah. she can hold her own against kind of mid level heroes, which yeah. is which is really good. Get her in a bottleneck. No cover is getting through. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, so you know, you keep her back. You know, you don't necessarily need her in the front either. She can be just supporting, mm -hmm. so you don't necessarily need to put her in harm's yeah. way. Um, so it just makes her again that little bit more survivable. Definitely. Um, she's got another. Um, Special rule as well. Yep, uh, go for the horse. Mm -hmm. Free to tall spear and friendly done landing models within three inch of her may re-roll to wound rolls against mounts during the fight phase. I like this. So um, like. It's got a mixed reaction mm -hmm. from what I've read uh, on social media. Some people are going, it's kind of pointless, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think it's cool. It's very thematic. Yeah. And I, I, if, if you, like you mentioned about fighting heroes, mm -hmm. um, any benefit that can help you get an enemy hero off his horse, yeah, or her horse, it, exactly, is massive, exactly. Massive, massive. exactly. Um, so I think it's it's one that potentially I think people are overlooking a little bit. I think for getting mm. heroes off the horse because as soon as they're off the horse, yeah. you know it's going to be far easier to to get them, um, um, you know, to to wound them and to win combats against them because they are rolling fewer dice and mm. actually it gives them the um, they aren't able to counter charge back against you either. So mm. there is uh, there is kind of that two way benefit there. Yeah. I think against um, your average, um, uh, you know, rider or Rohan or something like that, you'd probably still go for the rider rather than the horse because obviously it's yeah. only what it's only yeah. one attack. Um, but what it does do, uh, mm -hmm. I think, is it's three inches, so it's six inches all in all. Yeah. It kind of if you've got an area where you you know you might have uh, an objective or another character that you want to protect yeah. that you don't want to die and you don't want your enemies heroes getting on them, you put them there. They're not going to risk. No, their leaders losing the horses. No, so they will. They may go in with the normal cav, uh, but that, that it, you it, you it, can. It's gonna basically what I'm trying to say is it's gonna make your opponent think about where they charge their heroes in. Yeah, and um, so if there's an area you want to protect from that, stick her in it, and they're gonna think twice about doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's the good thing about it, I think. Absolutely. So she is very very cool, and again another beautiful model as well. Stunning. I'm really looking forward to getting this one painted up. Yeah. Last uh, last hero um, is the Wildman Oathmaker, and this is the guy that you see slitting his hand when yeah. he's talking to to Saruman in the Two Towers film. He has fifty five points. Uh, he is fight four, strength four, defense four, two attacks, two wounds, courage four, and with three might, one will, one fate. He's got access to a uh, dagger and um, a heroic strength as a heroic action. Mm. He does have two special rules, which are fearless, which is great yep. you're really useful and hatred for Rohan so slightly situational mm -hmm. um, it means that only if, obviously if, they go, if you face up against Rohan great if you're not up against Rohan then you haven't really lost very anything. thematic though. yeah absolutely he does have a few special rules we will die for Saruman all wild men of Dunland included in the same army as the wild men Oathmaker gain the Isengard keyword for the duration of the battle so that's really useful mm -hmm. um, you know the Isengard um, uh, army bonus yeah. will apply to them as well so it means that you've got you start you have to lose 66 percent of your models before you start taking courage checks for being broken which being a low courage army is very handy absolutely plus if you've got a lot of wildmen mm -hmm. um you could potentially add, you know hoard out the army to to some mm -hmm. extent as well um so that could be very very useful um and then the last special rule is blood oath friendly wildmen have done them within six inches of the wild one Oathmaker gained the fearless special rule. So again, for a very low courage army, um, it is very useful. So it's twelve inches. It's twelve inches, yeah. And <laughs> if we think about how much fear causing, fear, how many fear causing models and armies there are out there these days, yeah. that can be very, very useful. Very cool. Very cool. So um, I think we'll see him fairly mm. often in, in armies. I think he could be quite useful. Um, and it's, again, it's another fantastic Stunning. model and I think this model really captures that that scene there's from the no film mistake in him. no there's absolutely no he's in he's he's really cool so no. I'm looking forward to getting him painted up as well yeah. so should we move on to the two new troop choices for Dunland so what's first Steve so we've got a cav option now for Dunland in mm -hmm. Dunland in Horseman which is very cool because yep. it used to just be Thryden who was the only cavalry option for yes. Dunland army so this is very very nice uh, they are fight three strength four defense five one attack one wound courage three Wargaze armor, shield, horse, axe, and dagger. Special rules: slay their horses. Whilst they have the cavalry keyword, keyword Dunlanding horsemen, re-roll ones to wound against mounts. Again, it's kind of in the same vein as uh, Tilda's. Uh, not Tilda's. What's she called? Uh, Frida. Frida. Tilda. Frida. 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 Um, it's in the same vein as that. Yeah. It's aimed at a thematic force that is 
you know they've, they've been in combat with Rohan for many many years surely over time they would have picked up some ways of combating the yeah, uh, yeah. you know the, the, the horse lords yeah. Um, so yeah that, that's really cool I think I think again like I said you know if you were going up <clears> against <throat> um, uh, you know your normal uh, um I think mm. you'd probably still go for the rider most yeah, of the time, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Um, but I think you know, if you're going up against heroes and you just really want to get them off the mm. horse, you know, that could be quite a, a useful one just to make sure that you get that extra little bonus and extra mm. little chance. Um, but a cool thematic rule, nonetheless. Like and at 12 points, they're relatively cheap. Really nice minis as well. I, yeah, they are. Really and I don't think you'll see loads of these in an army. I you'll think see four in mine. Yeah, I think you'll see. <laughs> I think you'll see four in mine as well. Um, I don't think you'll see loads of them, and I. Th I think that again is thematic because they're not horse lords themselves. No. You know, all the horses that they that Dunlin are meant to have had are uh, ones that they've stolen, stolen. from uh, from the Rohirrim. Yeah. Um, so let's move on to the last uh, the last two new profiles. Apart my apologies, mm -hmm. uh, we've got the Dunlending Huskarl, which is eleven points. Um, fight three, strength four, defense five, one attack, one wound, and courage three. They have heavy armor, uh, Dunlending War Axe, and dagger. Mm -hmm. So the Dunlending War Axe um, can be used as either a spear or two handed axe. So this is very similar to the Axeman of Los Anak. Out, yeah. Lots of, um, so they, you know, that, that's that's gives them that little bit of extra versatility. Mm -hmm. um, so they can either spear support, and um, this um, one of their other special rules, which we'll come on to in a sec, can be very you know useful, yeah. and you can make use of the spear supports um, with these guys as well. And being go, being able to go two handed just means that they are that little mm -hmm. bit extra hard hitting. Couple of special rules. They've got bodyguard, so make make sure that they are hanging round. Yeah. Um, you know, low, again, go for low courage models. Um, if as long as the hero is still alive, bodyguard is there to to keep them around. Um, and they've got favor of the war chief. Dunlending Huskarl supporting a fight within three inches of a friendly Dunlending hero may gain plus one fight value for the duration of the fight, bumping them up to fight four. Mm. So that's quite useful. Yes. You know, there is an abundance of fight four out there yeah. now. Yeah. Um, and I know. Playing a predominantly fight three uh, army, um, I know I tend to struggle um, even winning combat some of the time. So this yeah. just redresses that balance. Yeah. Um, and yeah. you know, even if it comes down to a, a re-roll um, or a, um, a roll off between the two armies, at least it kind of gives you that extra little yeah. chance of winning the uh, winning the combat. At eleven points, I think there's been a lot of discussion online about how these might be slightly overcosted, but I think what people are missing is how these guys work within mm. this army um, I think in other, in another army maybe they might be a little bit overcosted. yeah you know when you compare them to some other profiles out there such as um, the uh, Citadel Guard or Guard of the Fountain Court so which are some, some sort of similar priced models you are getting that a little bit more bang for your buck yeah but I think with the extra bits that these guys can do and the army that they kind of fit within I think they are very reasonably priced yeah. well they're strength four uh, yeah, they have the option to go two-handed if they so wish. Yeah, so yeah, the the damage output potentially is a lot more than what the, the mother elites are. So yeah, it, exactly. Uh, so. I don't think if they are overpointed, it's marginal. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think. I don't think they are. I think yeah. they're fine. Maybe a point or so. But I, I, as I say, yeah. I don't think they are. And I say, as I say, I think with the way that they fit within this force, I think they are fair, very fairly yeah. pointed. Steve, do you want to tell us about the last one? So the last one we have yet to see a model mm -hmm. for. Um, very excited to see this model. Yes. Uh, it is the Crabane of Dunland. Mm -hmm. um, they are a bird infantry warrior. They're 20 points. They have movement of four, but they have the fly special. Mm -hmm. uh, fight two, strength two, defense three, two attacks, four wounds, courage three, mm -hmm. war gears, beaks and claws, Obviously, they have the fly rule, like yep. I said. Uh, special rule, keen sight. Enemy models within 12 inch of one or more Crabane gain no benefit from the stalk unseen special rule. So that's um, Elven Cloaks. Elven Cloaks. Um, yeah. So, very situational. Mm. Uh, you know, I don't think I've come up against that many Elven Cloaks. No. Um, and I don't think it's something that we tend to see. I think that a lot of people seem to think that they are slightly overcosted, maybe. Mm. Um, yeah. But, um, but you know, it's still... Nonetheless, it is still a fairly useful special rule. Yep, and there yep. is one more special rule that they've got, which I think is slightly more interesting. Yep, so Cloud of Birds, it's called. Shooting attacks will only ever hit a Crabane on the roll of a natural six. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty um, cool. I've talked about this in a previous video as well. Um, for me, they are a pin cushion for arrows. Mm -hmm. um, with the fact they have four wounds um, and they can only be wounded on a natural six. Um, they are... Or hit, hit, hit on a natural six. Hit on a natural yep. six. Um, they are the kind of model that you can just sort of sit them at the front and it will allow your army to move 
forward, which helps with a Dunland and Army because they're low defence. See, much I, the board. I, I, I think you're missing a trick there because actually it may. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think because it, that will, if you have something behind them, it makes going to make be making them easier to hit. So for me, mm. I, you know, because you know, you, you might only be hitting on a four plus whatever's behind yeah, them, yeah, and yeah. then you're taking it in the way for those guys uh, mm. if they're True. in the front. True. Um, the way. There's, there's two ways that I can see these guy, guys being used. I think, first off, because uh, they've got fly, objective grabbers. Yes. Um, so it means that they can fly over, and then, you know, how, how frustrating is it when you've got one guy sat on your objective, and mm. then he is taken out by an arrow, so you lose that objective. Um, these guys, even if your enemy's going to be shooting at them, it's going to take them a long that time to A, whittle down the four wounds, and B, to even hit them. True. Um, True. So I think that's one way to use them. The other way that I potentially see these being able to be used, because they've got that fly, they can fly over the battle lines. Mm. And if you've got somebody that is, um, uh, you know, that you want to trap and that you want to make sure that you're killing, you fly, you know, you keep them at the back, mm -hmm. you charge everybody in, and then you fly them over and pin, sort of yeah, pin them, them in, be, pin them, in, pin them in behind, make sure they can't move. Even if your enemy is planning for you to do that, it still means that they have to move other models behind yeah, to, yeah. To, to, as a blocker. Um, and I think that's and then they've got to inflict four wounds to get rid of exactly. Um, and I know they are only defense three, so a lot of things are potentially moving mm -hmm. them on on fours. Um, it may be even threes. Um, yeah. A lot of stuff. Um, but um, I, I still think that you know you can use them to, to trap those models and mm. uh, and abuse one. And I think an inexperienced uh, anybody inexperienced that's coming up against you will not under, you know, will not know what's mm. hit them when that happens. And all yeah. of a sudden, you know, you've got. Tilda supporting um, a a, uh, um, a couple of warriors with a huskar with a plus and the crevine um, uh, supporting behind that as well and trapping them. All of a sudden, you've got so many dice mm. being thrown at that combat that actually the two you know, attacks is very handy. Yeah, exactly. And, and it, it just well. really helps you um, yeah. win that combat. Um, so that's how I <clears throat> how I see them being used, and that's mm. how I think I will be using them in combat. Um, so we've discussed all the new profiles and the old existing profiles. Shall we have a quick look at the uh, Dunlan Legendary Legion? Let's do it. Okay, so moving on to the Legendary Legion mm -hmm. for Dunlan. Um, it's called the Army of Dunlan, and basically everything that we've spoke about um, previously in the video is available in the Army composition. Yep. Um, and there is some additional rules and special rules in the back. Yep, so additional rules. The Army of Dunland Force must include Thrain and Wolfsbane. Thrain and Wolfsbane is treated as a hero of valour and is always the army leader. What so does that scream uh, out to so you? That's 15, so you have to... Screams out horde. It does, it? yeah. So you can take a lot of warriors mm. with him, which is really, really cool. Some of the special rules. Death to the Forgoyle. Forgoyle is the Dunland name for uh, Rohirrim. Mm -hmm. Friendly Dunlanding uh, models gain the hatred for Rohan's special rule, which is good, because yep. not all of the warriors and, no. and everything, everybody had hatred. So it means um, it's army good. wide. It means it's army wide, which is yep. good, especially if you're coming up against uh, Rohirrim. Yep. As I say, very situational in a tournament. So you know how, how many Rohan armies are you going to come up against? There's mm. quite a lot of them out there, don't get me wrong, but it's not going to be worth it in every game. You've got Dunlending Pride. The range of banners in this army is increased to six inches. I think that's pretty that's big. Good. That is really, really pretty good. Pretty big. You basically, get, it's like get. I've always said like we it's like gate just gaining an extra dice, an extra attack. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Um, for the for the dual roll, which is which is arguably it's, and it, 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 it's like having two banners basically, isn't it? So you're not <clears> you, you set, how much is the banner? Twenty five points ish. You know, essentially you're saving you, twelve. And yeah, you're essentially saving yourself an extra twenty five points um, in there, which yeah. is fantastic. Um, and then one of the last special rules is Dunlending Warcry. Once per game at the start of any fight phase, Thryden can declare that he is using this ability. Until the end of the turn, friendly Dunlending models within 12 inches of Thryden gain a bonus of plus one to wound when making strikes. Amazing. It's so cool. Amazing. So, as we were talking about with the Crebane earlier, mm -hmm. you know, if you are using, if you've got a couple of those that are, you are using to trap some models mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you've got free to tall spear in for the fight five and, and things like that plus then uh, you get plus one to wound when yeah. making strikes you can really really do some damage yeah. Yeah. Um, to, to models that are, are kind of trapped yeah um, so I think that's and because you've got that horde you can hopefully kind of wrap around your arm, yeah. uh, the, your opponent's army as well so I think that is absolutely I really outstanding like how many times have you been in a game and you've got to a point probably last third of the game and it comes to the combat phase and you look, you look at the board and you think to yourself 
if I have a good round of combat, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I've exactly, got, I've got this. exactly. <laughs> but, it, it, but it's one of those, you know, do, do you, or, or you know, if you're thinking about, um, you know, examples of like, you know, hold ground or something like mm. that, all of a sudden you, 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 you kind of neck and neck in terms of numbers around the middle, yeah. you bust this out and you just decimate half their, you know, or, or a good chunk of their army in one turn. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, you, you, you're on a really kind of good mm. footing for winning the, uh, winning that game then. Yeah. Um, I think that's a, that's probably the, the big hitting rule. Yeah. It's, it's very, and very it, cool. It is only once per game. Don't yeah. get me wrong. So I, it's not as though you can keep using it and it's not as though, uh, you know, it's, it's going to come to play turn after turn after no, turn. No, no. And I don't think it should. No, absolutely. Yeah, you know, I, I, think, think I think it's, it's very it's kind cool. of, uh, it is a very cool rule, and I think it. You, it's got a defensive side to it as well because if your opponent knows you've got that, yeah, they're going to be very cautious about showing their hand and, and, too soon and, and getting into a lot of combat and committing too much in yeah. case you decide to call it. Yeah, so it, I think it will help you kind of dictate when that happens mm -hmm. and kind of where you know where the combats happen, where your your opponent is charging into you. Mm -hmm. So overall, do you think you're going to be using this army? Hundred percent. Yeah. Just just purely for cool factor. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think I think the, the the models are absolutely fantastic, which we've already discussed. You yeah. know, we absolutely love all the new stuff. Yeah. Really looking forward to seeing the uh, the new Krebane. Um I don't think it's the most on its own, I don't think it's the most hard hitting army. I think um, you know the, the the low fight value is probably going to mm. be a big challenge um, in this army and I think a lot of stuff will will go down fairly easily without much uh, without much because you've got they're quite cheap you will get quite a lot of them yeah. I think what it does it does well um, but there are things that it can't do yeah um, you know a big hero chew through your lines mm -hmm. pretty quick I think um, you'll have a lot to throw at them yeah so plus it, you'll be able to trap them yeah yeah <laughs> I, don't, I mean don't get me wrong uh, you know don't want to sound negative about this force at all mm -hmm. because played right and learn how to play it and I think you could do yeah. quite well with it it's got that many little niche special rules um, the war cry you know things like that the fearless yeah yeah um, the banners that, you, you that, could catch people out pretty yeah. easy with this I, I think, think, I the, think the, the banner as well you, yeah. you know we were talking about the, the low fight value being uh, one of the, the challenges I think the banner will definitely help that mm. so especially if you've got the banner um you know there aren't many spear supports in this other than the Huskarls, which I don't think you're going to be wanting a huge number of in this in this army potentially. You sit them um, at the back, don't you? Yeah, exactly. You sit them at so, the back until, until like the final third, and then you start swinging them around. But and but, uh, but overall, you know, you you you're not got that many spear supports. So it's not as though you've got those two lines kind of hitting. So I think mm -hmm. having a banner that reaches such a huge area of the of the yep. um, army is very valuable as well. Um, so I think if you were going to play this army, I think pretty much the Legend of Legion probably one of the, one of the only ways to play this army. Um, yeah. They don't have their own army special rule, it is just the Legendary Legion. Yeah. I think some of the um, other uh, guys getting the Isengard special rule as well is, is still pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, if they're part of an Isengard force, if you're taking the, um, uh, what's his name, the Oathmaker. Yeah. Um, so I think it's cheap as well. So the old yeah. thing is cheap. You know, you get the old maker, you get a war band of, of wild men or something. Yeah, you, you can whack them in a nice and guard list, and it, it just bulks out your numbers. It does bulks out it your does. numbers. So overall, very cool. Yeah, I love it. I'm really looking love forward it. to getting this uh, on the table. Um, once I've got my work I scouts done, this is what is next. On We're my literally agenda. working on the same. Yeah, list. we are. Yeah, pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. Um, so I think we will leave this one there, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Learned a little bit more about our thoughts on the. Um, Army of Dunland, uh, Legend of the Legion, and all the new profiles. What do you guys think about it? Have you picked them up? Are you going to be building them? Uh, are your thoughts different than ours? Because these are just our thoughts. Yeah. Um, if there's anything that you guys think that we've missed out, or think that we where we might be missing a trick, make sure that you post it down in the comments below. We need um, our tricks. We need we need to learn uh, ourselves. You know, this is we're, we're not we're not. And I keep saying this. We're not kind of top table players. I know you podiumed before, uh, but we're not kind of the, uh, the the best players out there. So there might be things that we have missed as well. Yeah. Um, but uh, hopefully not. Yeah. But yes, if we miss anything else, make sure that you are letting us know in the comments below. Um, and yeah, make sure you check out all the links below um, for our affiliate links, Patreon, which makes these videos possible, and all the links to our social media, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, the Facebook uh, group is one of the most friendliest, coolest places to be yeah, it's, online it's at the moment. Um, and yeah, I look forward to being in some more videos very, very soon. I've been Top Table Steve. And I've been Top Table Ben. And we'll see you very soon. Mm -hmm.